Hello guys, welcome to Past Ninja Listening Hub of the Century. This is an unplanned episode. I know, I know, I know we have the unscripted, but this is way unplanned. Like, I don't even have a talking point. I'm literally going back to the WhatsApp chat I had with my guests to truly understand what we'll be talking about today. Let's see how the conversation goes. I have here... An amazing friend you've met her before when mm-hmm. we talked about ftm <laughs> and she's here again being the wonderful woman that she is to talk about this thing called sexual and gender-based violence Sha. <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us, introduce yourself to the community hello everyone my name is lois so for me, Adira Moshe, I'm the founder of Good News Club Philippian Missions and um, a certified gender-based drug mental health advocate. I'm also a member of the Global Media Campaign to End FGM. Hmm. Me too, I'm a certified somebody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <Of> course. <laughs> Today's podcast is, we are trying to, is it commemoration? Am I pronouncing that right? Yeah. Yes, of the 16 days of activism where we are looking to end violence against women. What would you define violence against women as? Um, I would say that any any act that does not go down well with a woman is violent. Is violent. Hmm. Any act that you don't take permission, you know, from her to to actually do, like, um, and of course, it en- endangers her life, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. is violent. Because that fact that it endangers her life is what I would say, okay, this is violent. Okay, feel free to use Google. Okay. Because I've been meaning to ask this question. I'm also in the development sector, I'm also in the non-profit. But, please, what is the difference between GBV mm-hmm. and V-A-W-G, which is gender-based violence mm-hmm. and violence against women and girls. Why are they two different things? Okay, um, violence against women and girls is mm-hmm. specified to women and girls. Mm-hmm. But sexual and gender-based violence is talking about both genders. Any sexual, any violent act, not sexual, it may not be sexual, it could be any other thing, but any violent act that affects any gender that targets a person's gender. If the person is a male, there are, you know, violence that affects the male um, folks too, and then there are violence that affects the females. But then, um, for the one you mentioned, violence against women and girls, Mm -hmm. that, we're just talking specifically about women and girls. Let's go back to our school days. I had a friend, right, who is always dating guys. Mm -hmm that would beat the hell out of her. It felt like, you know, she would leave a relationship uh, mm-hmm. hoping to, you know, meet with someone who is better, but end up being with someone who still beats her up. And, you know, as roommates then, as friends then, we, we tell her, look, babe, you need to leave this. Yeah. Thing. But she always found it difficult to leave. Why do you think women stay in violent relationships? Yeah, um... I would say that some women see it as normal because they grew that same way. If you check, she would probably have um, that issue from her family. Maybe it happened to her mother or someone she stayed, uh, someone she stayed with, maybe her guardian, or it had happened to somebody before. And probably she felt it was the normal, that okay, this is how relationships are supposed to be. And when you tell her to leave, she's like, ah, it happened to my mom or it happened to someone close to me. So I should I can just continue doing what what you know, it's a, another guy can also do that to me because it's like a normal. So I'm but then someone is beating the hell out of you. Yeah, why would you think it's normal? Ah. I know it's not normal. Now there are, there are different ways people think. There are different things that people have gone through. So there are, there are, um, there is a problem. It's actually a problem when a girl is seeing that as normal, because at the end of the day, the guy can kill her. Mm-hmm. But then when you see a girl like that, the first thing to do is to speak to her, get her a therapist. That, Omo, babe, this thing is not normal. Though. 
So this thing called sexual and gender-based violence, Sha, is not normal. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we then tie, because now the violence has occurred, but mm -hmm. this woman is not leaving this relationship because of a mental problem. Can we tie that to a mental problem? Yeah, it can be said as a mental problem. Now, it's not all mental problems that is madness. Obviously. Yeah, it's not all mental problems that is madness. Now, there are some that happens in this way. Like, just what I've said. It may be true that she has been seeing that happening, you know, maybe in her home, her parents or people that she has been with or her friends. And it just felt like it was a normal thing for my guy to shout at me, for my guy to want to slap me or beat me. It's a normal thing. If he doesn't beat me, I feel like he's not correcting me because she feels that that is a method of discipline. Mm -hmm. So she would probably not think about it in that way. But then that's, that's part of the reasons why we're doing this awareness talk, that anybody violating you um, or abusing you in such a way, it's called intimate partner violence. It's not right. You know, it, okay, like one of my friends will say, anybody that shout at you first time in the relationship, shout at you second time, mm -hmm. just on third time, he's going to give you a slap. <laughs> so it's better to just run before it happens. From the first time. From the time. first time, because he would shout at you not only there, but he would shout at you even in the public. He would shout at you in the public, he would shout at you with his friends and all of that. And when you look at that going down, it's called emotional violence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. When you try to put a person down so that everybody will know that I have dominion over this particular person, mm -hmm. is emotional violence. Like we have different types of, you know, abuse. We have the physical abuse yeah. where you see bruises on the person and all of that. Mm -hmm. Unexplained bruises. Because when you ask, the person will start saying, I fell from the staircase or I hit my head on so, 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 and so. Madam, do you live in a flat? Where is the staircase coming from? <laughs> That's the best question to ask. No, maybe the next time somebody will ask, I say, so where do you live? Then I say, okay, maybe, maybe I'll try to know your house. Where you live in a flat? How did you fall from the staircase? <laughs> or somebody said, somebody even told me of recent that they use gates. That was gates that mistakenly scratched her cheeks. Uh -uh. If you see the, the, the thing is a scowl. If you see on her face, gates. <laughs> Hmm. I'm telling you, Bidemi. It's, it's, it's amazing how we've, we've gone from, you know, gender-based violence to um, violence against women and girls. We've tied it to mental problems. We've yeah. tied it to intimate partner violence. It's all encompassing. And then it makes me realize that this gender issue, mm -hmm. I hate to say it, but we are still far from... from where we ought to be. I know there has been progress. Yeah. <laughs> but I th things happen daily. Yeah. And I think we were making progress before the COVID-19. Hmm. We were making serious progress before mm -hmm. the COVID-19. But after, during, the during COVID. the COVID-19, we had a rise, a serious rise in gender-based violence, especially intimate partner violence. Women were living with their abusers and they had nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. We also had that even with female genital mutilation. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's it, it came it, it's as if it came back to where we used to be. You see, this is why I'm particular in you know the small art which is all about gender balance. I'm particular about reaching boys mm -hmm. as much as I want to reach girls. Yeah. Because we need to let them know. I was talking with my colleague, you know, this morning. Mm. And we were talking about um, men wanting independent women, but when they finally get an independent woman, they cannot handle her. They can't. And then, you know, things start happening. Yeah. And we were also talking about cross-generational sex, the, the blurred lines, how, you know, child marriage is not sexual assault for some, mm -hmm. for some people, how consent from a minor is not rape according to some people mm -hmm. and then he went ahead to say we need to let our men know we need to make them frown at their friends behavior yes yes I, he's a guy yeah but that struck me because if your friend does something like beats up a woman and you don't frown at it as a guy because he you, also does it mm -hmm. and or he feels even if he right do it yeah accomplice for not 
saying no that that was wrong or you guys really let him know exactly never try that anymore very true i think we should try that approach yes. i loved it when he said that and it was pretty amazing we are involving boys not boys now we're involving men, men. into desensitization that's what we call he for she mm. those men that have they have taken it upon themselves to fight for women you know we're involving them because now you can imagine a man that his mom, abu- um, the father abused his mom over the years. Now you expect that particular man or child, at the, as at that abuse. time, not to abuse his own wife when the time comes. Mm-hmm. It's not going to. It's not possible. Why? Be- because he he feels like no, it's possible. It's it's possible later on if he has a good education about it. Mm-hmm. But then he feels like that's the normal. That's what I'm talking about. Breaking the normal. That thing that people think is normal is passed from generation to generation. If my parents, my forefathers did this, I see my father doing it. That means it's a normal thing. If I beat my, my wife, then... Or I beat my mother. Or I beat my mother, you know? But then there are some boys these days that have the understanding that my father beating my mother is wrong. And it shouldn't happen. And it shouldn't happen. And I should not continue this. And I should sensitize others that this thing is wrong. So we have men that are actually standing up for other women. And that is why we're saying that every other man should also do that. When you go for your, this thing they call the men's club. I hope you are watching that series as well. Mm-hmm. When men go to, <laughs> when men have their meetings, you know, they go for their, their clubs and meeting themselves, having their um, fun gist and all of that. They should also talk about these things. You know, when they go to have some drinks, that's what I mean. They should talk about these things. Um, it's not right to don't treat your wife like that. If that one say I treated, I slapped my wife, I called her a pig or something. You should tell him that no, that is wrong. Don't say because he will not buy me the next drink. I should keep, um, you know, telling him what is not right. Massaging his. Oh people. yeah, yeah. <laughs> How about permit me to use this word? How about the right system being in place mm-hmm. to support women and? fight the Mm. moment they get the courage to speak Mm. i've seen girls who have spoken out they had to challenge yeah yeah okay you were there in one Mm. of our most touching you know an emotional moment we i think was there anyone who did not cry at some point on that day Mm. we had kids who finally had the courage to talk about what they were going through Mm -hmm. and we went back to the school authorities wanting to take it up from there but we were shut down by mothers we were shut down by fathers Mm -hmm. now do you think that girl will will ever talk about her situation again she would not want to talk about it again but if there's an opportunity when she finds someone else like you she would want to talk about it now even these cases we are saying we have 20%, we have 40%, we have 50%. We're talking about people that have reported their cases. And the larger portion of these cases are not even reported. That, the thing now is, it's not that the girl was able to talk. Mm-hmm. It's that she thought that her parents would fight for her mm. for talking. And nothing has been done. The, the person who assaulted her is still working freely, like nothing happened. Mm. That's not The right. problem now is not the talking. The problem yeah. now is what happens after the talk? What have we been able to achieve, you know, as NGOs and CSO? In fact, I have taken a pause in that outreach deliberately on my part, mm-hmm. trying to figure out what's next. Mm-hmm. Like what next after a girl finally tells me what has happened? No, you know, if it's my child, it's a different case. Yeah. I, I know the length I would yeah. go to. But if it's another child in a school, <laughs> first of all, the process begins. You have to tell the school authority. Yeah. The school authorities will call the parent. Yeah. Then we get, okay, what would you like us to do this? Can we bring in the law? And then if the parent says no, because we obviously it's their child, which yeah. is what they say that mm-hmm. we stand. Nothing happens. Do you know how helpless it makes us feel? Mm-hmm. How it makes the entire sensitization process, permit me to say, useless. Yeah. Why did we get them to talk if nothing is going to happen? Something can actually be, do- be, be done to that particular situation. Because if you look at all of this, she told you because 
she wanted something to be done. She felt bad at what happened. Mm -hmm. And the fact that she's still seeing that person, you know, um, walking around the streets makes her feel very, very uncomfortable. So that starts with us. And that is the duty that we have, you know, speaking out for them, fighting for them. It starts with us going to the school, making them understand that this thing that has been done to this girl is wrong. And the person is still out there showing that he's doing it to other people. So it's not even about this girl. Do you think the school has anything to do when the parent says no in a situation? Let me give you a story. One of which the girl finally spoke out. Mm -hmm. that, her case was actually the worst of it all. And I was like, we are going, we, we are taking this up. You know, she saw me, she came to me and was like, please, man. You people cannot tell my father. Ah, I said, in this scenario, we can't do anything without your parents' involvement. Yeah. They need to know. And they need to know that. And because these she's are a steps. minor. Yes, they need to know that these are the steps we want to take, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. I was still, my head was still hot. Yeah. She said, if my father knows, the first thing he's going to do is kick my mother out. Mm. I said, excuse me? He said, she started crying. Now, she was not crying because of the repeated abuse. Mm. She was crying because she knows that she will be homeless. She will make her, she thinks she's mm -hmm. going to make her mother homeless mm. if her situation, if her story gets to her father's ears. But she thinks she doesn't know if I, that is what will happen. I think the school did attempt to tell of, of, of the father, but they, they didn't get past the mother. Now, there are a lot of strategies to use when it comes to cases like this. And I feel like the first thing to do, if the mother, because I will always say the mother, because she is the first point of contact. If the school or you or we as an NGO can meet the mother, explain to her that this is what your daughter is going through. And this and this, not just because of your daughter, but because of every other girl out there. And there are cases where we don't mention the names of the girls or make people know that, okay, this is the girl that has reported and this is why the situation is like this. You can never find, you can't find a name in her. We, can, we only, just as we had described Exactly. Story, I'm only giving you the story. Exactly. I'm not mentioning the name or the parent or the school mm -hmm. for that matter. Yeah. You think that if they know that there, there will be this identity protection, they will be more open and willing? We can, yes, exactly. You can cover her identity, make it anonymous. The most important thing is that the perpetrator is punished and other girls, or even locked up in jail for years. Rape is 14 years. If you can stay there for years and nobody knows about, you know, knows that, okay. And this, he's forgotten. And he's forgotten. <laughs> When he comes back, he would have learned his lesson that if I do this to another girl, then... But now he, he went scot free. The psychopaths really learn their lesson. They do. They do. Please, for those for period of 14 years that is not around, a lot of girls will be free. And then when he's around? Before he comes back, he's supposed to have learned his lesson that this particular thing, I shouldn't do it anymore. Let and when he comes back, he will, he, will live with the, he, will live, he will live with the stigma. He will live with this stigma when he gets back. And everybody will be like, I don't go near him, don't go near him because information would have gone around that he did this particular thing. Mm. So it's a crime. I, I feel like it's a crime when the cases are not reported and the perpetrator is not punished. Mm. Because it's not like he did not know. He's a grown-up man. He knew what he was doing. So it's important that we keep the girl anonymous because of her future. Mm. But mm. the perpetrator is punished. No matter whatever the situation may be, there are other strategies to, there are other ways to go about it. Telling the mom, please, ma, this is what has been happening to this girl. And, you know, other guys, this and the other um, girls outside are, are probably not safe because this guy is walking around. So please, how can you help us? She's a mother. If that was done to her when she was young, then she would be feeling, she would not be where she is or she, something would have happened to her. But she, so she should put herself in the shoes of her daughter and every other girl out there. So there's an approach to these things. Thank you so much. You're welcome.
next year one mm-hmm. of the things we'll be doing as an organization is to you know try to the sdg 17 yeah. right where we partner with people mm. we're trying to really work with organizations so we'll be launching an ig live event okay but that's not the main thing you know getting other organizations working together you bringing having Ideas. these conversations yeah. together and then obviously and hopefully these conversations will spur our next solutions our next project like this conversation now can be the next we can make something to happen we can mm-hmm. think of some solution we can do right that's what these conversations will be for but the most important thing about what we want to do is we want to talk about bloodlines mm-hmm. What makes assault assault? What makes rape rape? You know already that we we tackle cross generational sexual relationship yeah. mainly, not because we are not aware of rape and sexual assault or mm-hmm. yeah we are aware of that, but we are particularly alarmed at how men mm-hmm. and predators yeah. seek consent, manipulate minors into yeah. doing their bidding to take the blame I like the them. fact that you use okay. manipulate, <laughs> gaslighting. That's emotional violence because she doesn't even know what she's doing at that stage. She doesn't know the, she doesn't know the implications. So now to, this event, yeah. will, women, we, 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 we have to start with you, in fact. Because when we keep talking about this event and they realize that, okay, these things, you know, is an abuse. Mm-hmm. I can come out of it. I can leave. I will not be killed. I will not be tortured. I shouldn't even start it in the first place. Hopefully, if we can reach people that have not started it. But yes, that is what we want to see happen. Mm-hmm. But beyond that, we want to let people know that there are no bloodlines in assault. Yeah. Early marriage is a problem. Is a problem. It's assault. It's an abomination. Let's not put it, let's not use nice words. <laughs> it's an abomination. It's not something that should ever be thought about. So it happens and because it's and because a 13-year-old girl is married, mm. she's a married woman, so therefore she's not being raped. Let me right? just look at, look let me just say stuff. something to parents that give their daughters out. Let me just create this scenario. Every time you give your minor out to an old man because i'll call the person an old man even if you're 40 i'll say you're an old man if you give your minor out to an old man you are giving that man an opportunity to rape her every single day that's just what it is you are giving him an opportunity to rape her because she probably doesn't even know what that is but then that's the reason why we hear them crying we hear them struggling during um the because i've i've had it, it chats with, I've seen some of all these documentaries, you know, on um, early marriage and all of that. When you see them, when you hear cases like that, you are always hearing that they are struggling, they don't want it, and all of that. And after they are pregnant, they don't even know what to do. Then you start hearing um, fistula and all of that. So you're giving that man an opportunity to rape your child, pardon me. You're giving him the opportunity to rape him every single time. That's what child marriage is. And every time you do that, then you have put your child in danger. That's even if you know the importance of having that particular girl child. Because they feel like she's a girl and she's not so important. Mm. But the boy child is more important because he's the one that would inherit my properties. He's the one that would um, um, get married and have you know, get married and have his wife and kids and then take care of. So I should invest more in my boy child than my girl child. And that's the reason why they don't go to school. They don't allow the girl child to go to school. You know, this, this thing I'm saying now, is not like it's an olden days thing. Oh. I'm saying it's still happening. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm saying it's still happening. The same things you do for your boy child, the same... Um, finances, the same things you do for your boy child, do it for your girl child as well. We see, we see girls that, because of the way her, their parents treated them, they left the house. They trained themselves. Mm. And today they are better people. Mm. They are even better than the boys that the parents invested <laughs> in. <laughs> see the way Lois is 
You no, are para no, no, para. no. Honestly, honestly, I'm seeing cases like this, and it's very annoying mm -hmm. because a lot of parents put even up till now. Up till now, some parents do it even without subconsciously. They don't know they are doing. They it. don't even know they are doing actually, it. Actually, I actually think that's true. They don't know they are doing. They're not doing it intentionally. They're just doing it because you know, ah, this my it's, boy child, like this all wired inside of inside them. them. Anyways. Well, we are, we are rounding up soon. Yeah. Like my colleague said this morning, teaching a woman or letting her know to be independent, like mm -hmm. to earn her money, increasing the earning power of a woman yeah. is half of the solution. We need to teach our men. Is it teach? We need to let them know, our boys, to frown at certain behaviors. Exactly. And I think that would be my next call. That will make them, that will even, you know, um, help this work to go further. Uh, yeah, I because, honestly think that's my Yeah, next if, the, if the both genders come together and frown at the people doing it, because frown at if anything. a lady is frowning at a guy, it looks like uh, it's because she's a lady and it's because she's going through it. Mm -hmm. That's why she's speaking out. Mm -hmm. But if a guy faces his own fellow guy, and tells him, no, don't do this. This is wrong. If you do this, then you are an animal. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to say. But then if you do this, then you're not, you're not supposed to be among human beings. If a, he, he would go back and think about it. Like if my fellow man would say this, that means he's not doing it. And that means what I'm doing is wrong. So we, we employ men and boys. I'm saying boys because we have boys in schools. Mm -hmm. And they have phones too. So they'll probably listen to this podcast. Amen. Yes, they will. <laughs> because we'll try as, as, as much as possible to, you know, relate it to them. So even as boys, you are in school, you are seeing um, a boy bullying another girl and you are quiet about it. Or you are seeing uh, things going on in your school and you are quiet about it. It's our responsibility. It's each of our responsibility. Everybody has that responsibility to care for the next person. Don't just say, ah, no, I don't know this person from anywhere. He's not my brother. He's not my sister. If you see a girl going through one thing or the other, you can assist her. Some of us, we see these things happening to our house help in the house. We see them happening to the house help in the house. And we're not doing anything. And we even hear cases of even the boys, you know, forcing the, um, raping the house helps. Well, this, this is, it's, it's just, so, no human is less of a human. I think we all need to relate with humans like that. No one is less of a human. Mm -hmm. No one. Thank you so much, Lois. You're welcome. <laughs> I'm glad to be here. It's interesting. It's, it's like we shouldn't end it. I know, right? It's a conversation. <laughs> See, you've made me realize how much I miss podcasting. In the midst of having to move off in my trainings and work, it's been really tiring. I've mm -hmm. got episodes that I've not published yet. Uh -oh. Like they are there, ready, <laughs> but they've not been published to tell you about it's been but you know what you've rekindled the fire <laughs> and our conversations will be happening as you know people are expected so guys yeah 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 this is another conversation you should listen to and if you can guess what the next conversation will be you'll be getting a free gift from me mm -hmm. thank you so much for listening and do have an awesome awesome day or evening if that's the case oh what would you like to say go ahead and say that. <laughs> okay um i would say that this is not a, just a job thing for me it's about our girls it's about mm -hmm. our women mm -hmm. and like i've said it's each of our responsibilities to help every girl and to show love love is very important and i'm grateful to global media campaign and unfpa for this opportunity to do this podcast oh yeah we we we, we you had to do that i'm so sorry yeah it's fine. <laughs> all right then thank you so much bye guys bye